This is the Silhouette Alta, a 3D printer aimed at creatives and crafters by a company with a ton of experience in producing easy to use cutting tools. Brace yourselves friends, this one is a bit of a game changer. They almost got it perfect. Almost. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. Let's kick things off with some info on the company behind this little Delta 3D printer. Silhouette produced a range of CNC tools aimed at creatives from scrapbookers to graphic designers to all manners of crafters and hobbyists. They sell products that cut, engrave, mark a range of materials such as cardstock and vinyl with the usability and aesthetics of your more conventional desktop inkjet printer. Well, they certainly nailed the aesthetics here. The Alta looks gorgeous. This small Delta is completely injection molded and manufactured to a very high quality. In fact, I would go so far to say that it's probably the highest production quality of any 3D printer I've ever come across so far. And I would guess a team of engineers and designers worked on this to get it right. So top marks from me. The print volume is 124 millimeters in diameter due to the Delta design and up to 130 millimeters high. Pretty small, but large enough for many craft projects. The machine is PLA only using a custom Bowden extruder and hot end assembly and no heated bed, just an acrylic plate with painter's tape basically. It's been a while since I've seen painter's tape as a print surface and yes, it does work, but it's incredibly fragile and easy to rip when you take prints off. And a note here too, the acrylic plate comes bare and you apply the, the painter's tape to it. And because it's laser cut, it actually has a slight angle to the edges due to the laser cutter curve. So you need to make sure you position it with the larger edged up top. Otherwise it kind of wants to pop out of the pins that mount it to the, in place. You wanna make sure you get it the right way around so it sort of snugs down, not pops up. Other than that, this machine is no frills, no filament out detection, no power loss recovery, and no interface at all, just the power switch. In fact, everything is controlled via a USB connection to the PC using their very own software, Silhouette 3D. The software is honestly stunning. A lot of work has clearly gone into it and it's aimed at people with little to no experience in 3D printing. The loading and unloading sequence is clearly explained. And even though I'm not a big fan of side mounted filament spools like this, it actually works quite nicely, providing you're using their own spools and not aftermarket 1.75. But look, there's no DRM, which is really nice to see. So you can use any 1.75 millimeter filament as long as it's PLA, but it actually works pretty good. Bed leveling is clearly explained and accomplished by adjusting little limit switch offset screws. But mine was pretty close from factory, so I didn't have to tweak that too much. I can't see you ever needing to change this again once it's set up. Anyway, let's chat about the printing experience. As I mentioned, this machine is not aimed at 3D printing enthusiasts as such. There's no modding potential, no tweaks to do, or tons of slicer settings to change. It's designed more as a tool for crafters of all kinds. And to encourage that, Silhouette have a huge online library of models you can purchase and print for all manner of projects. But, and this is really neat, you can also design your own things right here in the software. The 3D modeling interface is reminiscent of Tinkercad in that it's primitive based and you adjust and combine shapes to create more complex results. I threw this keychain together in literally a minute using the text generator, a flat box, and then punching a hole in the part at the top corner and combining it all together. The Boolean operations, that is the actual combining and cutting of shapes, can fail on occasion, but if they do, there's a nice pop-up that recommends grouping so the slicer can still figure out what's meant to be one whole object. This is also required if you're printing multiple objects at once because it forces the slicer to treat them as one and do a single skirt pre-extrude around them versus around each single one, which it won't do because there's such a tiny print volume, it'll complain. So that's also handy to know too. The software appears to be running Cura Slicer Engine under the hood build 3.6, which is nice and fairly recent. The default settings are fine, but if you wish, you can go in and change quite a few things such as layer height, perimeters, infill, print temp, and more. There's even gyroid infill, which is pretty cool but it's not really intended to be used and changed by beginners. Instead, there's a nice range of pre-made profiles with descriptive names such as tall and thin, supported, draft, etc. I tried printing these forming tools at 100% density because I wanted strength and sadly the PLA did warp at this density, which does happen on an unheated bed 
even in PLA. So I would stick with defaults with the default infill for optimum printing results or if you're just getting started. The printing is pretty quick, partly due to it being a delta and partly due to the fact that print volume is so tiny and the quality of the smaller prints was okay, not amazing. The stringing is a little bit of an issue as it's removing support material uh, as required, but they do have a really good online tutorial series that does mention opening the door and letting air in if you do have issues with stringing. I do want to mention this door quickly has a key. That actually could be pretty cool in an area environment with kids like a school or something where you just want to keep kids or animals out from the hot end and the moving components. However, printing larger objects, well, we'll get to that because you see there's one big fat gotcha with all of this. This 3D printer does not cache the entire print job before starting and you cannot attach storage media like with pretty much any other 3D printer on the market. Nope, you must print tethered. What is tethered? Well, it means you must have a USB cable connected to this machine at all times back to your computer for the entire duration of the print. Not going to sugarcoat it, this sucks, especially if the print job is going to take hours and in 2019 is almost unheard of. If your laptop goes to sleep or updates, which Windows 10 does like three times a week these days, then your print will be ruined. But sadly, it gets worse. For testing, I was using my Surface Pro 3 tablet, which I do use to run heaps of machines down the workshop. It's pretty gutless, sure, but we're not doing anything too intensive here. I've run printers off it before, so I threw the Gayer Anderson cat print at it and let it go for six or so hours. So just in case you've forgotten what it generally should look like, this is the result from the Flashforge Adventurer 3, another machine I'm currently evaluating. But this print from the Alta has tiny little dots of overextrusion all over it. At first I thought it might have been caused by the larger than usual diameter PTFE tube, so I swapped to a Capricorn tubing, which has a better internal diameter, and I got the same result. This is tragic because the machine's mechanical design isn't at fault here, but it's the control method. Deltas have to do a lot more calculations than Cartesian 3D printers, and as a result this machine is suffering stuttering as a G-code is streamed to the 3D printer from the computer. Combine this with the notoriously buggy USB ports of portable devices and any high polygon model will suffer hugely. In fact, you can even see it on the 20mm cube I printed initially. I thought it was just the printer's quality, but looking at it again, it's the stuttering. Because of this, my clearance gauge only got down to 0.4mm and it's barely there. You can clearly see the little blobs that are welding it all together. But in the interest of being thorough, I decided to tether the Alta to my main editing rig via a USB 3 port, which is a very good computer, and the artifacts did visibly decrease, um, but they're still present, which highlights to me and leads me to believe that the custom control board in here is 8-bit and struggling to keep up with the calculations as it prints. So as a final test, I slowed the printing down by four times which has already took like six hours. And as expected, the artifacts do start to clear up. This issue is a huge blow, it really is. It's honestly the only thing I wish was different on this 3D printer. Everything else, especially the $300 US price tag, really does make for a fantastic little tool. Tons of R&D has gone into the design and creation of this 3D printer, and it's really being let down by this very archaic control method which really shouldn't have been considered in the first place. Remember, this is truly aimed at a novice who just wants a handy tool, and smaller, low-poly models do print just fine. But I really want to see this machine updated ASAP, with a faster control board and some form of onboard storage so you can disconnect it once the printing commences. That's all it needs to be a fantastic tool for crafters. To assist in testing this 3D printer, Silhouette also sent across the Curio, which is a machine that can cut and mark a wide range of materials, and I intend to have a crack at using both of these machines for a really fun craft project to prove that 3D printing is a tool that everyone can use, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Here on Making Smooth is my aim to empower your creativity through technology, and full disclosure, Silhouette did send me the Alta and the Curio free of charge for purpose of review, and all opinions are my own. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.